Howdy, my friends. How you doing? Hopefully you can see me. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, good to see you all. Happy Monday morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. I figured I would jump on here again uh, in a commitment to try to do more of these open lessons and these open forums. So feel free to ask me anything that you'd like, guitar related or otherwise, and we'll jump in. I already see a bunch of people in here. Bob P, Crazy Carlos, favorite alternate tunings. Man, I do not mess around with alternate tunings too much. Um, I do drop D and that's pretty much it, but I also kind of want that to change. Um, I don't know if, uh, excuse me, I fixed my mic. Um, I'd also kind of like to do like just D standard or E flat standard too. I think about that a lot. I really do. Okay. Good morning, Paul. Uh, Andre, I'd like to learn to play Meshuggah too. Uh, I have no idea how to do that stuff. Jason Rodriguez. Good morning. Books into AI images. How are you, sir? Uh, Duke Le Levine, Levine, whatever. Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, um, in your guitar course, I don't know how to say your name. Let's just go with X. I'm not into it that far. Do you have something that teaches chords and how to relate them to scales and melody? That's actually kind of the basis of the whole course. For those of you watching, all my courses are on guitargate.com. Just search guitargate anywhere and it'll work out for you. The algorithm will do the rest. Um, basically, um, let's see. If you're not that far into it, you're probably in the free beginners course, which by the way, anybody that's watching, if you're a total beginner or you just wanna start at the beginning, that's free. Uh, so I would say jump into level two, uh, where you start learning the caged shapes, and that will grow into how you connect those caged shapes with chords and melodies. Um, but that's really the basis of all my teaching, which, which is boiling down what you're learning, whatever you're playing, to basic chord types, and how to connect them with simple melodies. So like the progression I was playing before, which was uh, B major, A major, and E major. So a five, four, one in the key of E, if you will. Uh, we would start with big chord shapes, right? Go to smaller triads. with melody. Hopefully you should have heard um, the chord function movement in that melody playing. So yes, all of that is on the site. Just start at level two. Each lesson builds upon itself. Jake, how you doing? Good day. Um, Crazy Carlos again. Heard Carlos Mina standards two-handed tapping technique. Been a favorite lesson this summer. I haven't seen that, but that is uh, I'm not familiar with that. Mr. Tonic Amps, good to see you. Trucks joined Fish for an incredible Saturday night. I did not see that. Um, wow. Mead drinker. Check out Duke Levine, huh? Um, you know what? Let's pull that up. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can get lucky here. Uh, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. I'm very curious now. We'll see how this plays out for us. Give me a minute. Hope you're all having a good little Monday here. Let's go to YouTube. Let's go to Trucks Fish. Let's see if we get lucky. Uh, one day ago. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. I'm very, very intrigued. Hopefully you can see and hear that. Yeah. They might. They might. I'm curious. Let's see what happens. What channel is it? Eh. Somebody's independent channel. Let's see what happens.
appreciate that, bro. Thanks for being a lifetime member. Try not to get totally blocked here, but that I had to watch a second of it. Very, very cool. Um, you know, Derek's one of those guys, no matter whom he plays with, everybody else on the stage is just like, like, Derek's everyone's favorite. Okay, 655, thank you so much for the donation. That really helps. I appreciate you. He says, from someone who doesn't play guitar, what are the secrets to Jerry Garcia's sound? Um... Uh, it depends on kind of what you mean by the sound. You know, some pe people will take that question as a tone question. Um, for me personally, the thing that I really learned from Jerry that I really uh, continually work on is just like the question I just answered before, which is um, if you were to remove the underlying chords or the rhythm guitar or anybody else playing with you, could you hear the chord changes in your playing. Um, it's it's a, a, a commitment to chord tone soloing and connecting basic triads with melodies. Uh, using chromatic movement to do that, uh, lots of different ways, but th that's the thing that stands out to me. As opposed to a blues player who is very much key centered soloing like i'm playing in the key of a minor versus um i'm saying something about all these different chords that's the for me that was the thing that that struck me and and started me kind of on this path okay will what picks do you use and have noticed a difference if you play different ones all right what do i have around here i can never find my picks but this one is a green dunlop uh, maybe I can zoom in here. We'll get my, I got to block my face. That is a 88 millimeter. Now, I, I, uh, my voice is a bit quiet compared to the computer audio. I will turn my voice up then. Stand by. I should be able to do that very easily. Check, 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 check. Let me know if that's any better. Okay. Um, I used to always use heavy picks, okay? Uh, and then I went to medium picks, and the older I get, the more I'm leaning towards lighter picks. Um, the difference is, is uh, the sound. Um, I have, uh, like the lighter picks get more of a scrape against the strings. You know, the heavier picks, it sounds big and clunky. <laughs> a lighter pick what do I have here that's the same size it's it, it's just it's the heavier the pick the less it gives and so the less it kind of scrapes across the strings the lighter picks when you get a better when you become a better player and your muscle movements are more fine-tuned I find that I, I like hearing more of the pick I like hearing I like the string to move the pick in my hands more often than than the pick 
to physically move the string. You know what I mean? And that lighter touch with a louder, more powerful amplifier um, equates to big note bloom. Okay, it, 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 it gives you, it just, it just, I wish I could do it now. I can't plugged into this and with these, but it just, there's something about, like Angus Young is a perfect example. Big, loud marshals, not as dirty as you might think, just big and loud, really soft touch, okay? Um, Van Halen, um, you know, those are really powerful, driven amplifiers, but it's not like the gain section was really over the top. You're talking about the power tube section really over the top with lighter picks, and especially for things like the, the pick scrapes, the lighter the pick, the more it digs in, the quicker they wear out, but it, man, it just, it's got a sound to it. So the older I get, the more I play, the more I le lean, my, lean towards lighter picks, less game, louder, cleaner amps, um, and less effects in general. Okay. Hamad, thank you for the donation. Says, as a member on your website, I'd like to thank you for the progress, especially by learning triads across the neck. Man, that's what it's all about. That's what I preach. That's what I love. You learn triads and you learn how to connect them. Baby, I'm telling you, you can learn anything you want. That's the real stuff right there. That's why I dedicated my teaching to those. Um, Nicholas, Corey Wong has incredible timing and rhythm. What have you seen in his playing that makes him so good at timing and rhythm? I love this question. So, Corey, I don't want to pigeonhole him because Corey is a, is a tremendous lead player too. Um, but what sets Corey apart in his rhythm playing is that he creates a full body motion, okay? Uh, and then uses his other hand to mute and release to create this super staccato, super syncopated groove that is just his whole body. So I guess what, I, what I'm saying is you could do this, you know. You know I'm using my wrist, whatever, I'm keeping this groove but he gets this whole wrist thing. It works best with little parts, you know. The, the, the point I'm trying to make is, is he's keeping this whole thing going. When you get your whole body into a rhythm and you're just not moving these little tiny pieces, but your whole thing, you get that flow, it, ha it, it becomes this really, really tight thing. Um, here's a way I would equate it. Uh, as a drummer, so like I warm up and I play drums every day. I'm not a great drummer, but I do it for working on timing. Um, if you hit something harder, the longer you have to wait before you begin your strike or your stroke, if you will. In other words, the harder you hit something, the quicker the attack is, which means the longer you have to wait to hit it on that beat. So the hard, the, the hardest you can play, like if you get, if you get a metronome or whatever it is, and you try to play it as loud as possible, like you, you have, you're coming so quick at it, you have to wait literally as long as humanly possible to get to that point of impact. Okay, that makes your timing spectacular because you have to wait. The opposite of like playing as light as possible means you have all the time in the world. You can do the motion really slowly and then, and then just get to it, right? That is a very different approach. One is not better or worse, but when you, when you attack it like Corey, when he's literally just, you know, you know, like doing that whole wrist thing, he can't, just stop on a dime. He's committed to that high speed, high impact. And because of that, the timing is spectacular because 
it's so fast and it's so quick. There's no, you know what I mean? It's this machine that's going, and and that's 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 the, the hap, that's what's happening there. Um, Tom Haviland, how are you? Tyler McFerrin, do you have any advice for upgrading a guitar? I don't know how much I should consider spending for an acoustic or electric. It needs to be something suitable for advanced and professional playing. Tyler, um, if you go to my free course on GuitarGate, there's a whole video on there. It's free. Um, you can watch it, and I go about this in detail. But the answer is, listen, man, go to a store. Go to a used store, okay? Don't worry about brand at all. Uh, I mean, obviously, like, you don't want to buy something super cheap, but, like, if your budget is, say, $500, I would, even if it's $1,000, I would strongly implore you to find used, a used store, okay, used guitars, and find the one that feels the best to you. Don't worry about the brand. Don't even worry about the color you know, and what condition it's in. Pick out a bunch, even if you can't put words to it, right? Just try to get some chords, some licks. The one that feels the best. Don't even worry about sound as much. The one that feels the best to you in your budget, buy that one, okay? Because if it feels the best, you're going to play it the most. You can always swap out the pickups, okay? Uh, you can do, you know, change the color if you want or, or, or whatever. But if something, if you pick it up and you can't put it down, buy that one. Doesn't matter what make and model it is because you'll pick it up more. And that's how you get better at anything, especially guitar. You keep picking it up. Swear to God, that's the trick. Leonardo, good to see you. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's got to feel good in your hands. That's it. Yeah. Ja Rule, you're not wrong. I mean, if you have to start somewhere, right, start with a Telecaster or a Strat or, you know, the basics. But but just know that that um, it's all feel. Like, price shouldn't drive it. Sound is even secondary. Like, feel is everything because you want something that you pick it up, it makes you smile, it feels like it's your instrument, okay? Uh, and if you do that, you'll pick it up more. Yeah, all, I mean, I mean, I'm in a weird scenario where I can get PRS guitars without paying for them, but all of the other guitars that I've purchased, all of them, I'm trying to think if there's an exception. There is. The only exception is my PV Wolfgang. Every other guitar I've ever purchased in my life has been used. All of them. Okay. Can't stress it enough. They are not used cars. They're, they, they are great. Okay. Yes, Mr. Tonic. Same basic thing. Get it professionally set up. This, this is the same thing. Goes with feel. Uh, get, get a guitar that feels good and then get it professionally set up so it feels even better. The whole point is to get something that's a joy to play so you play more. Okay. Um, of, of my collection, which guitar do I reach for the most? The Silver Sky. The PRS Silver Sky is the one I reach for the most. But I gotta say, that NF53 I just had to give back to PRS, I was really upset about giving back. I really didn't want to give that one back. Um, but no, the Silver Sky is the most fun guitar that I have. And so I, gen I play music to have fun. And so that is the one. This is probably the best guitar that I own, the 594. Um, but the Silver Sky is the most fun. So I play it the most. Uh, let's see here. Sean K. So funny you asked this question. Um, I just got a Stratocaster set up with a Plek and it never felt easier and better to play. I just got a message from my old friend, Mike Vance, who works with Baltimore Music Company here in Baltimore. And he just said, hey, do you want to get your guitar plecked in exchange for some content around it? And immediately I responded, well, I don't know what plecking is <laughs> or why people would want to do it, but tell me. And he wrote back something similar. He's just like, basically, we have this machine that makes your guitar play better than it will ever, it's ever been able to play before. And I said, 
Okay, you have my attention. So I'm going to do that soon. Um, I've never played a Plek guitar, but it's so timely. I mean, he literally just texted me. Like, I have text from him right now. Um, so, yes, I'd love to check it out. Yes, Plek is awesome. Um, do I own an acoustic? Yes, I do. Uh, my favorite guitar in the world is my Cherry Taylor 510. The reason that I play an electric guitar online is because I am a very busy person um, and it is just easy for me to plug an electric, indirect, turn the camera on, make a video, turn the camera off, upload the video, moving on to my, my endless list that never even begin to get finished. Just every day I come on, I start a list, I cross off as many as I can. The next day, take the stuff that didn't get crossed off and I start the list again. Um, it is, uh, it's just easy for me. That, that's why I play electric all the time, because um, it's just easy. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. William Bennett, am I a Zappa fan? Um, I'm not not. I should, I should make, how do I put this? I feel the same way about Zappa as I feel like most jazz, most instrumental music, most electronic music. Um, it's most music that isn't, how do I put this? Song oriented is, um, these are great players. Tremendous respect. Just none of it ever gets stuck in my head. So if it doesn't get stuck in my head, it just goes in and it goes out. But I mean, those, you know, some of the funkiest jams ever are Zappa jams. I mean, I have tremendous respect. Tremendous respect. Impossible level of musicianship. Um, I just, like, don't ever get it stuck in my head. So I just forget about it. There you go. Black Midi. No idea who Black Midi is. Love it. Let's see here. Uh, indeed, there's a lot of theory in the course world. I must have missed something. Of, oh. Aaron, does the guitar gate slide and teach music theory, or is it just how to play guitar? Uh, Aaron, the way that I would explain guitar gate is a practical application of music theory. Uh, what that means is this isn't like a music theory course where you're going to write stuff down. But like I answered previously, it's a study of why things sound good. So if you have an A chord and a G chord, the theory behind that is that this A, C sharp, and E is going to this G, B, and D. And when you go to make melodies... Right? You're just connecting those triads. So you know what notes make up the chord. You know how to, uh, what notes are in the scales that connect those chords. And, that is what, and that's how you learn the neck. And that's why I call it a practical application of music theory. Very basic music theory will get you 95% of the way in popular music. Totally true. Okay. Um, yeah. Extremely unusual rock songs, Mr. Tonic. Extremely. Haha, uh, -ha, not going to write stuff down. I've been taking so many notes so I can remember the theory from your course. It's been very helpful. What I mean is it's meant to be applied on the fretboard. It's not like some music theory courses that you'll buy online or take in school like I did. They don't teach them on the instrument. It's literally all pen and paper. It's not that. So you make notes based on things that will help you to, to remember things, but it's about application. It's not on the specific instrument. It's not um, non-instrument specific courses on theory. You understand what I mean? Uh, go to your physics class. Glad you could hop in. Cheers. Um, ja Rule, have you ever thought about plucking anything you hear cool from the vocals? So Ja Rule, I do that quite frequently. I, I must say that, um, I'll leave this up here. When I'm making videos, 
I have to make a lot of choices in real time. As you know, as I'm sure all of you have realized, I don't really edit my videos. It's extremely rare that you see me edit a video. Um, it's never a reaction video I edit. Uh, it's always other videos. And so when I'm doing when I'm doing different kind of videos, I have to make different kinds of choices. So if I'm focusing on a singer-songwriter, I tend to typically um, focus on the lyric, the lyrical content, okay? Um, and I brush over the chord progression uh, or like, you know, mention it, but I don't dig deep. If I'm analyzing a solo, like a long guitar solo, I, I you know, I will tend to choose to talk about the intervals in that solo or whatever I'm picking up and not say too much about the vocals. If it's a song where the melody reigns supreme and the and the guitar solo is the melody and I feel like the melody is the number one teaching point uh, in this particular video, then that's what I will talk about. I might mention the lyrics, but I'll, I'll physically show or try to learn the melody part, which by the way, you should learn for every song that you learn that you're gonna play live, for sure. Um, so, so even though, um, I don't know how I seem on camera, whether it's scripted or whether it seems random, but uh, I'm calculating in real time what I think is keeping people's attention and, and what I think is the most valuable teaching thing that I can showcase and making a decision based on those two. And that's happening instant by instant live. Um, so it's always a choice and I don't always make the right choice. I don't always showcase the things that, that perhaps you want to see, um, but these are live and they are what they are. So uh, there you go, it's kind of like a peek behind the curtain, if you will. Uh, any new Kendrick reactions? I might do the whole album one like today or tomorrow. Uh, I really might. Uh, so many people said do it. Uh, to me, it seems somewhat uninteresting to just have my headphones on and listen to 45 minutes of music straight. Um, there will certainly be copyright issues if I do that. I'll have to probably stop in the middle of a song a few times and say something just to... Um, have it be, you know, ar that I could argue for for fair use um, and provide some kind of teaching content, but I want to hear it and I would, I think it would be fun, so I probably will. Um, let's see. Uh, do I do any ear training or just got familiar with chord functions over years of learning songs? So it, for me personally, it's learning songs. It's using ed music theory to take educated guesses when learning songs. And then when I find the right chord or note, I put words to it. Oh, that sound is a five chord. That sound is a three chord, right? That note is the fifth that I'm playing. And when you, when you put words to it and you learn a lot of things, especially when you teach a lot of things too, uh, those connections and those gaps get shorter, right? Connections get stronger, the gaps get smaller. Um, and my ear is not fantastic, believe it or not, but I have a very good practical understanding of music theory. Um, and I tend to stay in my lanes, in my genres, if you will. And, uh, and, that, and, that's, and that's what you see me do in these videos. Um, I did have to do straight up ear training like close your eyes, this is seventh interval, this is a sixth in school. But no, I don't practice that these days. I really feel that your time is best served by analyzing things that are already stuck in your head. Things that are already, that you love, that mean something to you and putting words to those sounds. That's, that's what I would recommend. Um, Let's see here. Uh, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, State 3 TV, how do you tastefully use some diminished scale runs for outside sound but still keep, keep it within the major minor pentatonic? I love this one. So 
the number one use, people freak out when I say stuff like this, when I talk in terms of absolutes, but it's how I understand things. The number one use of a diminished anything is to be, is to create the sound of a dominant chord, a functioning dominant chord in particular. Dominant chords don't have to function, meaning they don't have to resolve, but when they do, it's that diminished triad or diminished scale that really creates that, oh, I gotta go home, gotta go home, gotta go home, and then it gets resolved to one. So for example, if I'm in A7, right? And this is functioning. A7 resolves to D5 to one. Well, if you look at the upper structure of A7, so not the root, but the three, five, flat seven, you get this C sharp diminished triad. The diminished scale, so these are just stacked minor thirds. C sharp to E is a minor third. E to G is a minor third. If you complete the scale and add another minor third, okay, you get uh, you know A flat, if you will, and then it'll just take you, it'll just take you back up to C sharp. So the diminished scale is a four note scale. It's minor third, minor third, minor third, okay? And so all that's happening is that all that is resolving to D, okay? This, this, this whole thing, so whether it's a triad or a or a scale, it's just trying to resolve back to the tonic center, to one. So if you're in A, A7, if you're in the key of D rather, okay? And you're doing. And you're doing major and minor pentatonic stuff. And you get to A7. Just drop from a D, drop a half step, okay? So that's your leading tone, your C sharp, and hit a little diminished little little run. Or jump to any other chord tone in there. So if you're on D, you could also jump up a whole step to E, because remember, that would be the second note in your diminished scale, right? And same thing, just throw minor thirds around. And then resolve to a chord tone of D, and you're good. So you would just like, check it. You could do like a D major like this. There's G. to D. So you just use it a little sprinkle, a little sparingly. So start by just hitting a chord tone of your five chord. So if you're in D, go down to C sharp, maybe go up to E, right? Or you could go, right? You just, you just, you just don't want to start on A. The point is start, start on the third, start on the fifth, Okay, start anywhere on that upper structure, okay? Um, so the third, fifth, or flat seven. And, and then do a little one note thing of first. Okay, got it. Then try to do two notes diminished, got it. And you can do as little or as much as you want. But that's it. So we got, you know. just little pieces of it. So to answer your question, just 
Diminished means stacked minor thirds. Start it from the upper structure in, the, in, a, in a dominant chord, the 3-5 flat 7. Resolve to a chord tone of the one chord. That's it. Okay. Oh, let's see here. Um... Different material picks. I've never really messed with metal picks or anything else. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> is melody music important for society? <laughs> Let's go with yes. Uh, Taylor. Finally caught a live stream on lunch break. Never able to get my request. Nobody home live in Berlin. Roger Waters. Oh, man, I'd love to do more Roger Waters. I'm such a fan. Um... Not going to do it here, but uh, um, I will write it down for you. Thanks for tuning in, man. All right. Uh, how about Robert Fripp? Love Robert Fripp. Um, what a lunatic. What a, what a crazy guitar player. Um, I don't even know how to classify Robert Fripp, but he plays some of the craziest stuff I've ever heard. Um, and he's one of those guys you just watch his hands and you're just like, what is he doing? What is he doing? Okay. Um, CFL dumpsters. When playing the changes, can you explain how the scales change or if the notes are added to fill in? Uh, this is best illustrated on a keyboard, but this is basic music theory. So... Let's say I have a C major scale, right? That is all the white keys on a piano, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, okay? You build a chord on the one, three, and five of each one of those. So if C is one, you skip D would be two, three would be E, you skip F, which would be four, and you get G, so C, E, G. That is the chord built on C in the C major scale. Now you, you take that formula and you do that for each of the other chords. So you have the same notes, but now you're going to do it on D. So you have D, that's your one. Skip two, right, which would be E, so three would be F. So D, F, then skip G, would be A. That's your D minor chord, and so on and so forth. So for each one of the chords in a, in a key, you have the three notes from the scale that make that chord. That's it. So when you're soloing, you have this scale. Those are all of your notes. But if you want to say something more about the chord that you're playing over, so it goes from C to D, All you would do is you would take the same notes and accentuate, choose to, to feature the notes that make up the chord that you're playing over. That's it. So in C, you do. Now when it went to D, just choose to accentuate that. essentially how it works. Okay. Um, that is it, my friends. This nice, quick little online lesson here, a little open lesson. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. Uh, thanks to everybody that donated. That really helps a lot. Um, I appreciate you supporting me. And for those of you that are watching the first time or just simply haven't, if you like the way I approach the neck and teach the guitar, I invite you to check out all of my lessons and courses. It's my life's work. It's over at my website, guitargate.com. Uh, you can subscribe to get 
all of my courses. If you're a brand new beginner or you want to start from the beginning, the beginner course is free. You also get to watch all my YouTube videos ad free and you get access to the community and the discord, which is an awesome community, which is built on, um, keeping you playing, keeping it in your hands, surrounding yourself with people working on stuff in the hopes that you'll work on it too instead of doing something else that day. And that's it. So if you're interested, I'd love to be your online teacher. I'd love to see you on GuitarGate. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you soon. Cheers.